Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you're finding us for that very first time, you know, welcome as well. It's great to have you. And as a quick reminder to all, you know, my focus, you know, my mission here on the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can to as many people as I can, you know, across all regions. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel, you know, when you choose to hit that like button, and when you choose to share the information. Uh, with friends, associates, and colleagues. And so if you've not yet done so, you know, take a moment, hit that subscribe button, you know, please like the video and share the information with friends, associates, and colleagues. And then for additional information on how you can uh, uh, support the channel and for additional information on how I can help take your business to that next level, you know, please check out those links below. And so with that said, let's get into our topic here today. And it's seven things that you should know before buying a gym seven things that you should know before buying a gym and so if you're in the market you're out looking okay you know listen up okay these are things that you want to know you want to consider if you're looking at starting one if you're looking at you know maybe you already have one how do you compare on some of this but seven things that you should know before buying a gym and so number one is it financially viable is it financially viable? Okay. And, you know, when you, when you start looking at, you know, financially viable, can we make this thing work? Okay. A, how much money will it take to acquire it? How much money do you have? How lean will that make you? You know, how does that whole dynamic look? You know, if you go in there and you put all your money into buying it, and now you don't have any money in reserve to maybe operate it or to handle situations that come up, that may not be a viable situation for you. So really look long and hard. You know, a lot of times when I'm talking to folks and, you know, they're looking to acquire and they've kind of made up their mind they're going to do it. And they're just no talking them out of it. And, you know, it's not always the right thing. You know, you know, take some time to take a look at it. Don't rush into that decision. Is it financially viable? You know, can you make this thing work? You know, can you make it work? And, you know, one of the things that I would suggest Okay, and these are things that we can help you with, and you can find others, I'm sure, out there that can help you with it. But you know, get get an evaluation of the gym. Get an evaluation. Okay, and what I mean by an evaluation, where is your opportunity in here? Okay, you know, where what what do we have right now that that's being done in this facility that can be done better? Okay, where is your opportunity? You're not paying for opportunity like that. You're not going to buy based on that but it'll give you an idea is, hey is this a viable operation is there room to get done uh, what you want to get done and do you want to put that kind of time into it just you know consider those things the answer may be yes across the board but you want to know you don't want to make a guesswork um, number two is it worth the asking price now same thing here you know these are things we can help you with but get a get a valuation Okay, we talked about an evaluation. Get a valuation. Get a second set of eyes to look at this. You know, owner, they have their own opinion of what it's worth. You know, get someone else to look at it and say, okay, what is this thing worth? What do we think it's worth? And, you know, sometimes, you know, hey, if it's in a hot market and it's in demand, you might choose to pay more than what you think it's worth in some cases. Okay, but, you know, is it worth the asking price? You know, you don't want to go in there and overpay for something. Okay, and you know, usually you're going to value these based on you know cash flow and, and profits. You know, if they're not uh, producing uh, you know profits, you know, you're going to have to value it based on assets and how does that look. But is it worth the asking price? Okay, doesn't mean you wouldn't buy it. Okay, oh man, you're 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 twenty thousand more than it's really worth. You're fifty thousand. You still might. This stuff happens all the time for a variety of reasons. But is it worth the asking price? You know what you're getting into. Uh, number three, this one might be a little more difficult to kind of understand, but why is it for sale? Why is it for sale? I mean, I'd be constantly asking, you know, why is it for sale? What's really the reason? Okay. And, and maybe you can go, you know, check social media reviews and maybe you might pick up on something that's going on there. You might take check with the city planning office. You know, is there a, a big club going in across the street? Okay. That's uh, getting ready to go in. Are they going to change, uh, you know, the road flow? Is, is construction getting ready to happen? And you won't have any traffic in front of this gym for the next year. Uh, you know, it could be a lot of things. Go in and work out. 
go in and work out at the gym. Get a one-week pass, a two-week pass. You know, work out. Talk to members. What do you like? What do you not like? Okay, you know, find out as much as you can. But, you know, why is it for sale? And there can be legitimate reasons. Somebody's retiring. They're moving away. There's health issues. There can be legitimate things in there. But what we want to make sure, to the extent that we can, we don't have, you know, big brand new club coming in across the street. I've seen it happen. We want to make sure, hey, the road construction is not going to change the, the traffic flow. It's not that you can't make it work, but, you know, let's understand, you know, why is this person selling it? And depending on what those reasons are, that might be some good negotiation for you to get a little better price. Um, number four, is there room for growth? Is there room for growth? And, you know, many clubs, you know, you know, they rely on one source of revenue, that's that dues revenue. What's their personal training penetration look like? You know, how are they doing on retail? Are they generating, re uh, generating revenue off the website? Uh, you know, we always look at that uncontested market. You know, usually 80% of any market area is really not being pursued, you know, if we pursue that. So many times you can find room for growth if you're willing to do some of those things and if you understand some of those things. Um, number five, is the staff an asset? That's a big one right there. Is the staff an asset? Are they willing to stay? You know, if you're looking to acquire this gym, are you going to come in as the, the manager? Are you going to be the operator? Are you going to hire someone to do it? How's that going to work? You know, is the staff an asset? Does management stay in place? You know, what's their attitude like? Okay. If they're not producing numbers right now, you know, do we think they're going to be able to produce them later under different leadership? Okay. Because your, your staff, this is your brand, this is your most valuable asset above all, all else. And if they're an asset, great, okay, we hope they want to stay. If they're not, you know, we need to get a recruiting plan of action to get that together. But the more you have staff as an asset, you know, the better off you're going to be. Um, number six, is the website working? I hope it is, okay. But when I talk about is the website working, is it working properly? You know, when, when we look at a website, okay, when you look at a website, when you're analyzing, you know, facilities that maybe you're trying to acquire, here's the question I would ask. Is that website, is it an online brochure or is it a lead generator? Now, it can be whatever you want it to be, right? From my standpoint, I want it to be a lead generator. Okay, I want to be generating leads. I want to be capturing leads. I want to be doing all the things I can to, I want people to be able to find me. I want to be easy to work with, find me on a mobile device, find me on a laptop, whatever it is. But I want to generate leads and I want to capture those leads. And you need to go through that website to say, hey, is that happening? Go in there and sign up, you know, submit the information, see what happens. You'll, you'll find out, you know, pretty quick on that. Okay. And then um, number seven on seven things you should know before buying a gym. Should you be worried? You know, should you be worried? You know, one of the things I tell folks all the time when we take them on as a new client, if they're starting a new facility, they're acquiring a gym, you know, one of the first things I tell them, we want to make sure you're sleeping well at night. That's one of the first goals. We don't want this to be, you know, on our mind so much that we're, we're tossing and turning every night. And when it comes to should you be worried, one of the things I would suggest, we do this for clients, is we help with that business planning and that uh, that educational component. We do it in a collaborative manner, so it really becomes a high-level education on this. And what I want you to know and to understand if you're looking to acquire a gym is, you know, how are you going to differentiate yourself in the community? What are you going to do that's better than what everybody else is doing? How are you going to approach the uncontested market? How are you going to recruit and onboard staff? Okay, what are the risk factors here and how are we going to mitigate these risks? It really, it all comes down to education. If we have the education, should you be worried? Probably not because you're going to make pretty good decisions in most cases. And, and if you decide to move forward with it, you're going to understand, hey, here's the strategy we're going to utilize to get there. So seven things you should know before buying a gym. If you're looking around, you know, check these out. Okay, you know, get these questions answered as you're moving forward. And then also check the channel out here, you know, research the channel, lots of videos on, uh, on, on buying a gym and how the best way to approach it. So folks, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And again, if you've not yet done so, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit that like button. You know, share the information with friends, associates, and colleagues. And for additional ways that you can choose to support the channel and additional ways that I can help take your business to that next level, 
you know, please check out those links below. And we'll look forward to seeing you all in that next video.